very good morning to you. You're welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Rome Paulson. And my name is Nyamgul Agaji. It's another Monday morning and we're glad to know that you were able to join us. We survived to this moment and we're going to make it to the end of the year yes. and say, Eureka, we found the solution to all our problems. We will be <laughs> rejoicing when it gets to the end of the year. Yeah, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, we have some topics we'll be discussing this morning. Our first one is labor decries federal government's refusal to set up minimum wage panel and Lagos bans usage of styrofoam or the single-use plastics. We'll also be looking at what the national dailies are saying this morning in Off the Press as well as some top trending issues. But first, let's take our quote of the day. Don't be pushed by the fears in your mind. Be led by the dreams in your heart. And this is from Roy T. Bennett. Mm. Like they say, everything you desire is on the other side of fear. Mm -hmm. So if you embrace that fear, it's not that you see the lion and go and face him. No, mm -hmm. That's not the kind of fear, but you know, embrace that fear. Because if you say, I might fail, I might fail, you, you kind of attract um, what you think of all the time. So if what is in your mind, your dream, is big enough, pursue it. And I think it's a very, very beautiful thing to say yeah. on a mindset. Interestingly, I was on social media a few days ago and um, a popular Hollywood actress had posted a video. It was a fish in a little pond. And then there was like this, you know, sea as well. And the fish was trying to wiggle its way out of the little pond. And then it finally made it into the ocean. And I think the, the caption was everyone should actually put their best, you know, quotes for that. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the ones I saw that resonated the most was the fact that, you know, you're only in your comfort zone because you're afraid of what might be on the other side. But mm -hmm. as long as you can push through, you might just have that sea of opportunities, the sea of possibilities. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened to that little fish. Imagine it just being in that little pond. It could probably just die. He wouldn't know that there's, you know, even more to his life than what he was seeing, like the current circumstances. But then being able to move over to um, have that sea of possibilities, that just opens you up to what could become of you and you, you know, fulfilling your destiny and your purpose. So that's what um, Roy T. Bennett is saying this morning. Don't be pushed around by the fears in your mind. Be led by the dreams in your heart. So as long as you have a dream, believe that you can achieve it. And that's just what we're telling people this morning if you have a dream just know that you can achieve it push yourself don't be afraid you can make it through improvement never comes without discomfort there right. is no way you can find improvement in your life in your business in everything that you're doing everything about you that you will not find some kind of discomfort some kind of failure some kind mm. of disappointment but it leads to the ultimate goal yeah so it's like a, a, a picture that i think maybe you have seen it once Whatever you want to do, you you are the sculptor of your life. You mm -hmm. know, you want to get a perfect body. You want to be whatever you want to be. You mm -hmm. have the chisel and the hammer. Mm -hmm. You chisel out the kind of person that you want to be. But if you say, I don't want to hurt myself, no matter what, then you mm -hmm. will never improve. You yeah. will not go to school. You will not learn a trade. Mm -hmm. You will not do anything. You'll just be there. Even and, personal development yeah. as well. Because there are certain habits that we have and you start to realize I don't think this, you know, when you see yourself in a different space, when mm. your mind already creates a version of you that is amazing, you start to see yourself like, I need to take out certain things so mm -hmm. that I can get there. The person who's going to be there in a few years, we should not have this trait. So I have to start sculpting out, you mm -hmm. know, the things that are not necessary and start to put the things that would require me to become that better person. So personal development, in fact, in every area of your life, if you know, just as you said, even your body, at the end of the day, you're saying, I want to be healthy. Mm -hmm. I need to go to the gym. I need to have a better diet my nutrition matters so all of those things you just have to start to um, put the things that are necessary for you and take out the things that are not 
Mm. So it's a mindset Monday. We're hoping mm. that you will change your mindset about a lot of things. It's a it's a very fresh year. We're starting. It's only the twenty second day into the year twenty twenty four. We still have more than three hundred yeah. days. So there's uh, a lot of time to make that positive change in your life. Now, it's not everything that is sweet. That is good for you, mm. so you should know that. Um, so that move out, move out of your comfort <laughs> zone, and see what uh, you can do when you conquer your fears. All right, let's take our top trending stories this morning. The first one is police army rescue Najiba's sister, other Abuja kidnap victims following the relentless raids of the federal capital territory by the police command anti kidnapping squad in conjunction with troops of the Nigerian army. The joint security team on Saturday night res rescued several kidnapped persons abducted at the Zuma One area of Wari Area Local Council on January 2nd. The FCT Police Command, in a statement signed by SP Josephine Adi, said the operative successfully rescued the victims around Kajuru Forest in Kaduna State at about 11.30 p.m. on Saturday, the 20th of January, 2024. Suspected bandits on January 2nd and 3rd attacked Zuma community in Bwari Area Council of the FCT in the early hours injuring two policemen and kidnapping about 10 persons including a father, Mansour Kadira, and his six children, all girls. During the attack, the victims quickly alerted a middle-aged man identified as Alaji, who mobilized policemen to try and follow the kidnapping of the seven family members and others, but he was shot by the bandits. Alaji Abdul Fatai Kadira was later discovered to be a brother of Mansu Kadira. During the exchange of gunfire, two of the policemen were injured before the bandits made away with the victims. Subsequently, the bandits demanded a ransom of 60 million naira and killed the eldest daughter, Nabiha, owing to the delay of the, of, in paying the ransom and later increased the ransom to 100 million naira. Another three persons had earlier been kidnapped by bandits in the early hours of at rather Bangori area in Bwari area local council after inflicting gunshot injury on a vigilante during the incident. According to the statement, CP Harun Agaba appreciated the Inspector General of Police IGP Olukayode Egbetoko for the deployment of the newly commissioned Special Inter Intervention Squad, which has given an uplift to the existing security architecture of the FCT. Noting that it has brewed public confidence, CP Garba reiterated the command's commitment to sustaining the robust security development deployment made in the area and other parts of the territory for the utmost maintenance of peace for all and sundry. He encouraged residents of the FCT to note following the following emergency lines and promptly report suspicious activities at 80 3200-3913-0806158-1938-070-5733-7653 and 08028940883. So these are the numbers to call if you say if you see any suspected activities. I'll take the numbers again 080 3200 3-0-8-0-6-1-5-8-1-9-3-8-0-7-0-5-7-3-3-7-6-5-3 and 0 8 0 2 I was going to say where well, the number's not called too fast and then I remembered when I was working on radio, you just say a number and the next thing is Someone's people are calling. calling. Yeah. yeah, I don't know how the people have the ears to hear all <laughs> to that. To catch it. Uh, but yeah, but this uh, this kidnapping or kidnappers are getting bolder and bolder, mm. and now the incursion into the federal capital it seems to be like it's more lucrative. Anybody mm. that they abduct in the federal capital territory, the ransom demanded for is so high, uh, outrageously Imagine high. Imagine the audacity. Yes, they so, killed someone. The ransom even was policemen, supposed to be yes. The ransom was supposed to be. 60, 60 million. million then you kill someone and increase it to a hundred million because they know they know the kind of know that uh, they are going to get away with it now we've been told that they have been rescued uh, by the special intervention squad when they rescued them did they did, were they 
where the kidnappers just sleeping at the time that they rescued mm -hmm. these people where are they they should have rescued these people and captured a lot of yes. other people who were the kidnappers themselves uh, at this point no matter the atrocities that uh, abakiari committed i just i miss him Ab <laughs> <laughs> yes abakiari of the the sars i miss him <laughs> Uh, because I know a lot of people will just roll eyebrows and say, hey, that man was a criminal and all that. But while he was holding sway, he did not let a lot of these things, things happen. happen. He, will, he will hunt them down. Maybe because he was in bed with them, I don't know. But I do know that he did a wonderful job, up to the extent that the National Assembly at some point gave him a standing ovation. It's unfortunate that we discovered later on that he, like I said, was in bed with yeah. some of these criminals. Uh, mm -hmm. But... Um, Whatever it is, he did a good job. Mm -hmm. So uh, wherever he is right now, for the good ones that he did, we thank him. For mm -hmm. the bad ones, mm -hmm. well, maybe he's already paying for them. Yeah. But Special Intervention Squad is another name for NSAS, for SAS. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so whether we like it or not, we just want that squad, if there's a squad, we just want that squad effective to do, yeah, and to do be the right, enough. like the job they're supposed to be doing, not harassing people on the road. Yeah. Um, I mean, this kidnapping thing, like you said, is becoming rampant and they're so bold. And we have to start to curb out these things because guess what? It starts with two people that would say, oh, you know what? I'll go kidnap this person, get money. When people see that they are being successful and nothing is being done, there's going to be an uprising. You're going to see more people that would do it and think, you know, I'm not, nothing is going to be done to me. I'm not going to, you know, be arrested. I'm not going to be captured. Nothing. And that's not what we want. We want a situation whereby the lives and properties of Nigerians are secured. Because you, how can I be in Nigeria? And I'm even scared. I mean, when, Abuja, when no, came let's, let's even they... talk about the fact that Abuja is the federal capital territory. Where you see all of these politicians, you see people there, like people that are supposed to be, that you think they even have more protection than you mm -hmm. somewhere, like in a rural community. And these people are there going there to kidnap them, you know, steal from them. No, it's... It, one we chance have to, and all that. Yes, we have to capture My greatest right annoyance, now. or one of my greatest annoyance was... When they came up with the issue of NIN, they told us that it will curb all these things, they can track bandits and all that. These bandits are still kidnapping people, even with the NIN. They're and also then making phone calls. The, the person that was in charge, uh, the pantomime that was in charge of this NIN and gave us all the promises, now is organizing people to pay ransom for a friend who was kidnapped. It, it was on the news the other day, and it was saying somebody has de um, decided to pay whether 50 million or so for kidnapped victims somewhere. Pantami that should have had all this information and should have used it for, for good. And he's now telling us that he is involved in so collecting what are they doing? ransom. What are they for doing with the data? That's, that's, that's a very It valid makes no question. sense. What are they doing with the data? First, you start with BVN, then you come with NIN, then you come with KYC, then you. you Every single, in fact, I'm sure in another six months, there's something else that they'll ask us to, to go and register for. So if you're not going to use that to, to the advantage of Nigeria, then why are you collecting that data? What are you using it for? Okay, well, we'll move to the next one. Follow no demands and to scandalous pension for ex-governors. Human rights lawyer Femi Falano has called for an end to what he described as scandalous pension for some ex-governors in Nigeria. Falano, in a statement, lamented that while many state governors voted themselves humongous pension payments and allowances, some of them chose not to pay the pensions and gratuities of their former workers whilst they were in office. He noted that not less than 20 of the former governors are in the Senate, where they also receive jumbo salaries and allowances. And according to him, uh, who is also the chairman of Alliance uh, on Surviving COVID-19 and Beyond, ASCAP, the pension laws for Lagos, Akwaibom, and River States are the most scandalous. He pointed out that in the Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, Sarah versus Attorney General of the Federation, and Al Haji Garba Umar versus Taraba State Government, the Federal High Court and the National Industrial Court declared as null and void the payment of pensions and gratuities to former governors and deputy governors. He added that in 2022, the Lagos State Government announced the 50% reduction in the pension, while Senators Daniel and Dan Kwambo have directed the governments of Oshun, 
Ogun State and Gombe to stop paying them the pension since they are receiving salaries and allowances in the National Assembly. He gave further examples of the government of Kwara, Imo and Zamfara states abolishing the payment of the pensions. He, uh, he called on other state governments to abolish the pension as soon as possible and uh, explained that Nigeria can no longer afford to pay scandalous pensions to ex-governors while workers are owed arrears of mega pension. According to him, the pension laws applicable to other public officers should also apply to all ex-governors. I agree 100%. Yeah, a few days ago, uh, the former governor of Lagos came out and said that Lagos pays him only about 500,000 naira as pension per month. Okay, well, uh, mm. it's it's tolerable amount to pay an ex-governor, but is that really what happens everywhere else? And the fact that pensioners who are waiting for 30,000 every month or 50,000 every month, don't as the case get, may be, yes. they don't get paid. Why is someone who is working for four years getting a pension, uh, a steady pension, a humongous pension, and steady, and then the people who work for 30, 35 years yeah. are not getting theirs? Some and of this these is people, even a very meager sum. Some of these people worked all their lives. They did not even have the money to save enough to build houses when they go home. Uh, and so they were waiting for gratuity and pension and said, okay, at least I'll get a lump sum at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. I'll build my house, go and rest and all that. And then you don't find it. Then you find verification every month. Every, every month. You come from where, wherever you, you are you on your sick you. bed and some of them collapse there and die. And then you're still giving people unknowingly the people who are still in the National Assembly right now, as we speak, collecting salary from the National Assembly and collecting as governors. Yeah. It's, it's outrageous. Yeah. It's just outrageous. And, and, and I think, because so if you hold a public office, you're there to serve. Mm -hmm. I don't see it as you're there to make money. I mean, it's nice that you get wages because your time, you know, your efforts, those are valuable. But how do you go for like four years? That's why I said I completely agree. How do you go for four years and you're getting so much? Meanwhile, me that I've, I've labored, <laughs> that's the word. I've labored and I don't even get enough. I'm not, I'm not okay. But guess what? You are fine because the money that you have taken over the years, in fact, the pension, because if the former um, governor of Lagos State comes to say he's only getting 500,000, I'm like, is that what he survives on? That is a good question. Maybe he has businesses, maybe he has other things. But some of these people, they were not able to, you know, build a business. Sometimes you give your entire life. Mm -hmm. How how convenient is it for you to, you know, have a full-time job, then still have another business that is budding? Mm -hmm. Do you it's, understand? It's, it's, Most times that's what, what it's are saying. you going it's to use hustle. to even finance this, yes. this business? You don't have loans from banks because uh, they're not even they're, they're, they're not the, the terms are not even favorable. Yeah, even if, even if they're it. available, mm -hmm. they give you a profit margin that you cannot even fulfill. Mm -hmm. And you're asking yourself, what am I taking the loan for if I'm going to end up the whole of my life paying back the loan? Yeah. That may not make sense to me and all that. So there are a lot of things. This world is not just engineered, or, or let's say Nigeria, yeah. it's not just engineered f to favor the poor man, you know, the right. ordinary man, mm -hmm. not actually poor, but the ordinary man. Everything is just geared towards that. You, re you are rich, you become richer, yes. you're poor, it, it you floats. Become poorer. It floats. It's like this. Like the, the money doesn't come this way. It's like this. It, it's like it's been circled around the 1%. So we're just exchanging it. But it coming downstream, not really. The chances are very slim. I'm not even asking for a humongous amount. Just give me my due. You know, if I'm supposed to, if I'm paying taxes and I need uh, a good education for my children, give it to me. Yeah. Give me health. Mm -hmm. uh, give me everything that I'm supposed to. Have. Give me a good road. Yeah. Give me a favorable environment. It's mm -hmm. it's my right as right. a taxpayer uh, yeah. in this country. I'm, I'm not asking you. you to give me extra. Just give me what is due me. The basic and then, things. Yeah, and then I'll survive. So if you're paying me fifty thousand per month, but I know that my child will go to school with that fifty thousand, I don't have a problem. I know that whenever anybody in my household is sick, you go to uh, the hospital. You get system. healthcare. Is good. Then. All the, the, the basic things I have, okay, if I'm going home to my state, maybe there's a, an available train, the roads are safe, mm -hmm. and the transportation is cheap. I will be not easy. be complaining. I will yeah. not be asking for minimum wage of 200,000 because yeah. 50,000 is just for to have fun, to mm -hmm. just, it's extra. You're chilling. Because everything else is available. Being there is accommodation, you know. 
But right now, uh, I saw somebody, somebody just joked and said, okay, this is 2024, another time to work and pay the landlord. I swear. Because that's, that's, that's what it is. You're just leaving and paying your to, landlord. So. Anyways, let's move over to our final top trending story. It says court finds police ex IGP son over 50 million naira over violation of 50 million naira over violation of Abiola's rights. Justice Mutukwe Osho at DBE of a federal high court sitting in Abuja has slammed a 50 million naira fine against the Nigerian police force over violation of the fundamental human rights of Professor Zainab Duke Abiola. Also affected by the fine is one Ibrahim, who is said to be the son of a former inspector general of police IGP, Usman Akali Baba. According to an enrollment order dated December 19, 2023, and obtained by one of the newspapers yesterday, the defendants were also ordered to tender a public apology to the applicant in two national newspapers. According to the matter, the respondents had paraded Abiola, the applicant, in a nightgown, which the judge held was a flagrant violation of her rights. Abiola filed an application pursuant to Order 1, Rule 3 of the Fundamental Human Rights Enforcement Procedure Rules 2008, praying the court to declare that the arrest and torture and detention by the officers and men of the first and second respondents acting on behalf of Inspector Teju Moses and one Ibrahim who, without any suspicion that had that said she had committed any criminal offense, constituted a flagrant infringement of, of her fundamental rights. She had asserted that the breaking and entry into her house on September 20, 2022, without a valid court order, constituted an infringement of her rights and a threat to her family life. In her judgment, the judge held that it was not unlawful to arrest, detain, or charge anyone suspected to have committed an offense to court, but it must be within the limits stipulated by the law. According to the judge, the applicant ought to have been charged to court within 24 hours, but this was not the case as she was detained for about 72 hours. However, the judge declined to award the 500 million naira damages requested by the applicants, but awarded 50 million naira as fair and an appropriate fine. Yeah, well, uh, no time to even talk too much about it. Yeah. Whoever is at fault, pay, <laughs> pay for it. Yeah, that's as simple as that. No, no, nobody should be above the law. Mm -hmm. Even the police that should be the law enforcers are doing uh, somehow with yeah. impunity. So if they are found wanting, they should pay yeah. the fine. They should they should go in for it. It's just that you cannot uh, take the whole police people to, to, to court. Uh, no, no, to court you can take them, but you can't take them to prison. Like yeah, true. the whole police force go Who's to prison. They, they, can't <laughs> go, they can't go to prison. But whenever something like this happens, let them pay the fine. They, the problem is that when they do it to people who may not be able to have good lawyers mm -hmm. and to mm -hmm. cons institute a case against them and all that, this they go scot-free. Mm -hmm. So the law should be so good that even the poor man can also fight them if his rights or their rights are being trampled upon. Yeah. Because it happens. ATM matters, that is, uh, awaiting trial matters, are so many in the prisons now. Police do, will just go and catch you uh, on and suspicion of something, you. dump you there. Nobody talks for you and you are there for years. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. There's so many people that are even innocent in this in this place. A right? lot are innocent, yeah. I can tell you that. But as lot. long as they don't have um, a lawyer or anyone who can plead their case, they're just forgotten. Mm. And that's quite sad. And, you know, talking about fundamental human rights, I don't know how you would move into someone's house and parade them in their nightwear. Like, why would you even do such a thing? Because... Like the judge had said, you know, you have to, you have to, you know, move with the law. Mm -hmm. So even anything that you're going to do, you can't go outside of the law. Move with the law. And that way, you know, when, when a case comes like this, the judge has nothing to say. Like, oh, yes, you're well within the rights. You just open the books and say, okay, this is what the law states. Okay, they were doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. But this mm -hmm. is not this. It's impunity. Mm -hmm. And, well... <laughs> Let's just take that break. Yeah. All right, we'll go on a quick break. We'll look at what the weather is this morning. And when we come back, we'll be having all the press. Please stay with us.
No, this is a very good uh, call. Uh, given the fact that uh, what, are, what, are, what we are using now is not biodegradable. Uh, usually you see it's, it's a health hazard because it blocks uh, drainages and it is an ISO, and uh, this causes a lot of problems. You know, that is why uh, if this thing is not taken care of, uh, our fight like against malaria and other diseases will be in vain because of uh, the dangerous hazard that uh, they constitute. You see, it, it, it all depends on uh, the consequence. You have to weigh each policy has its own uh, negative consequence. Yes, it will act. Public interest or the interest of, uh, uh, you know, the producers. So I think uh, to me, even though this is a, a draconian measure, it's so sweet, um, I think that is the way to go about it. Uh, the government, of course, being a democratic government, should have, uh, you know, alerted the people and give them time space to to do it. But uh, uh, to me, I think that is the best way to do it because if we allow people to keep on doing it, we don't know what is going to happen. Uh, maybe uh, yes, the government can give them a little time space uh, to adjust, but. Uh, Given our attitude, the Nigerian attitude, I think even if we give them two years from now, they will not be able to adjust unless they see that uh, something is coming. So by doing that, uh, at least we can put them on the, or the government will put them on their toe and they will address the issue uh, seriously and uh, rapidly. You see, in most of our cities, virtually every nook and cranny of the city are uh, turned into markets. We have to be organized. We have to uh, know where the market is, where public res the residential areas are, where businesses are, uh, where you know companies and so on. So I think this is a good thing also, even though the people will think it is too harsh, but uh, we have to be organized. We cannot be so chaotic. Everywhere you go, you, you, you find markets here and there. And so I think the, the government should make arrangements in such a way that those who are banned should be relocated to other places so that whoever has a need, he knows where to go and uh, get his own needs there instead of this haphazard nature of market all over the place.
Yeah, I think this is a, a very bad thing, a very sad uh, epitaph in our own history, because one, uh, the, the phenomena is widespread. Initially, it was uh, northeast, then northwest, uh, then north central. Now it is going all over the country. That is one thing. The second alarming thing is that uh, they have so they have become so audacious that now they give bank account that uh, are supposed to be people are supposed to pay in there. So I think this is where the problem is. Uh, the government has to do something on such banks, uh, especially given the fact that uh, two banks that seem to be very prominent in that. So I think unless, unless we take action, unless the government take action on those, and this phenomena will uh, keep on going, uh, you know, it will rise more than the way we are seeing it. So I believe, and I think the best way is for the government to head up these things, uh, not to uh, allow people to continue with it, especially the, the banking sector, uh, that, um, you know, we are told we have to have BVN, we have to have NIM uh, attached to accounts. What happened to them? Uh, so that we cannot uh, dress or uh, trace those who own the account. I think this is a, a very serious problem. You see, uh, taxation is is uh, one way to generate uh, revenue, but it has negative consequences. Uh, if you put uh, the higher the taxes, the more you make uh, companies, you know, to wind up, and the more you now make them to to fly uh, to leave the country. Look at what is happening in, in, in developed countries like America. Most of its businesses, most of the industry are outside uh, in other places where the cost of labor is cheap, where taxation is low. So I think the government has to weigh in on that issue, not to overflow the issue of uh, taxation, especially the concern that uh, many the investors are having there is high taxation, there is multiple taxation, there is corruption. So I think all these things are one thing that the government uh, should look into and see that we have a realistic tax policy that will encourage rather than discourage investors to invest in Nigeria. Um, I will grade him very low uh, uh, because one, the inflation is rising, and uh, two, uh, the naira is uh, one of the uh, three worst performing uh, currency in the world now. Uh, it is, I think, after uh, the the Lebanese pound and the uh, Argentinian peso, then there is the Nigeria. So I think it's a good thing. It's a very bad uh, situation. And then there's also the issue of, uh, you know, insecurity, which even the economics uh, of, of today, you know, come out with very damning report on the insecurity. And there is also uh, rising inflation, like I said, there is rising poverty, uh, all uh, which are contrary to the Renew Hope uh, agenda. If the things, if things keep on going this way, I think the Renew Hope will end up being a dash hop for Nigerians instead of a Renew Hope.
You see, there yeah, it is a very good thing that we should have uh, major pa political parties. The way we are having, you know, mushroom parties all over the country, I think it's not a, a good thing. Even though, in terms of democracy, we allow people to form their own political parties or to join any party of their own. But some of them are just mere briefcase political parties. They don't exist on ground. So the idea of having major parties will uh, give Nigerians the chance to choose. Look at what happened in 2015, when the political uh, environment was dominated by PDP, when some people joined and formed APC, it was able to dislodge the, the uh, PDP from power. So I think what we need uh, major past parties so that at least we have three or four major parties which will allow Nigerians the choice to choose. Uh, the way we are having it now, if we allow it to continue this way, we may end up having uh, uh, in parts, uh, not uh, in the in law, we will end up uh, becoming a one-party state because and that is too dangerous for democracy. It will have inaccountability, will have, uh, you know, impunity, and so many things that uh, uh, accompany uh, one party system. Uh, I doubt it very much. Uh, as you said, uh, leadership is one of the problems. <clears throat> you see, what enabled APC uh, to be able to come out in a very short time was that they have a rally in person. They all rally around Buhari, uh, and that was what uh, make them uh, what make the alliance possible. But in terms of these uh, three major parties that you have mentioned, uh, I think the issue of uh, personality is there. Everyone will want himself to be the leader. Unless they have a person uh, that they will rally around, uh, that will be a pipe dream. So what I'm suggesting is that even if the three of them could not give up, let them find a neutral person that both, all of them will rally around. Secondly, they need to have a program and ideology, or at least a uh, a principle that they will rally around, not just the idea of any party, but APC in power. So if the only thing, uh, I mean, aim is to dislodge the party without any program, I think that one also will be a very Herculean tax for them to have. And the third thing is they need to go in every nook and cranny of the country in terms of selling their own programs. Unless they have all these measures, I think uh, it will be a pipe uh, dream for them, always thinking that they will come to uh, form a mega party. After all, the, the ruling party will also will not allow, sit down to allow that to happen. It will woo some of them, like what is happening now, uh, even the N uh, NMPP here in Kano, uh, the, the uh, uh, underground moves that... Uh, they are going to be moved back into APC. So I think these are some of the things that uh, they have to look into, uh, which are realistic challenges for them to become a, a mega party. I quite agree with him. I think even the 
court has said it, it is immorally, uh, uh, it, is, it is an immoral issue that a pension and, uh, and I, after having the pension, they will also join the National Assembly and will be getting a, a, a new salary. So they will be earning a salary and they will be earning pension, which according to our own laws of the land, there is nobody who will retire and is earning pension and then he get a pressure appointment. So I think the law uh, is clear about that. I think it is wrong and uh, like uh, what the court said, it is morally wrong for them to have that one. And uh, is, uh, so, secondly, it is a wastage of our own resources. It is a drain on public uh, resources, given the humongous uh, pension that uh, they give to themselves. Yeah, all right, we'll go on a quick break. Stay with us. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, uh, Nigerians. Good morning, Lagosians. Uh, this uh, issue at stake, uh, you would recall it vividly, was properly negotiated. Uh, it's a timeline given for all these uh, agreements. Uh, in particular, the one you, um, you mentioned now, which is reference to the wage award and the minimum, minimum wage. Minimum wage statutory is due for this year, which is around April. And prior to this uh, time, the labor and the government agree that uh, because of the adverse effect of the subsidy remover on the life of an average Nigerian and the workers, there is need to design a, a, a palliatives, which is called wage award to workers, so that they will be able to at least sustain uh, pending when minimum wage will be reviewed. And as at that time, they have already requested for nomination of uh, committees, both from the union side and the government side. From the union side, both NLC, the two labor center, NLC, Nigerian Labor Congress, and the Trade Union Congress have since the review of minimum wage. But up to this moment, the government have not deemed it fit to inaugurate the committee for action. But we, as a union, we are not waiting to that, uh, we are not relenting. We have been doing our background uh, assignment in terms of uh, research into what we call not only minimum wage, this time around it must be a living wage for all workers across board. So this prompted the leadership of the Nigerian Labor Congress to immediately put up a technical committee to research on the rates, the standard rates of an average Nigerian in each of the 36 states and FCT. We know there are peculiarities across it. Some states, cost of commodities, a minimum standard of living is above the means of an average worker. So we are going to negotiate this time around in line with all these socioeconomic indices across states put together, which will form the backdrop of what labor is going to propose to government whenever they are ready for the negotiation. But what we know for sure is that it will not, it can never exceed April, because by April, the minimum wage will have been lapsed and it will not be of effect. So before they call us to a table, we are preparing our, our notes 
we are doing our background research across states so that whatever we are putting across to government will be in line with the current reality and it will be a living wage for all, not just a take home, which cannot take people's. Uh, we will not be able to preempt the intention of government. Uh, we are a labor movement. We are always battle ready. We are focused and we are determined. And, and we are, and for sure, you know, we are partner in progress. Uh, so maybe two, three weeks ago, uh, the current uh, acting minister of uh, labor and employment uh, issued a statement that the uh, federal government is ready to clear the backlog of the areas of uh, wage award because they've only paid two out of four, September and October. As, as I speak, November, December wage award is still pending and January is counting down. So she made uh, some issues, some official statements in this regard that they are very mindful of paying all this backlog because it's affecting the life of an average worker seriously. As I speak, most of our colleagues in the public sector find it difficult to celebrate Christmas and New Year uh, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, entitlement. But be that as it may, they are, we are ready and we are hoping that they will pay this backlog and refocus their attention to the negotiation table, which they have already established, so that they can institute and inaugurate this uh, committee formally, so that work can commence in earnest before a pre-deadline, which this minimum wage will have uh, lapsed. So we are very, very optimistic. We don't want to be pessimistic. We don't know the intention of a uh, government, but they are working as we heard that they are going to inaugurate this committee soonest. But they know it's a statute, it's a statute, it's a constitutional, it's a constitutional matter. You understand? And uh, government uh, is the, should be the number one respecter of law. So they know for sure that the law of the land says if the, for sure you know that we have our instrument and we have our uh, mode of operation. So we we'll give them some ultimatum uh, uh, approaching this uh, deadline to let them know the reason and the, the, the urgency of this uh, committee to commence work in NS. So we will give them the necessary timeline to know that this, if they have not, they refuse to commit it, inaugurate this committee between so and so time, it will create a kind of vacuum, which means 